Yeah. Okay, if you would like to come forward, the people are a part of our proclamation on human trafficking. So come around. <laughs> Whereas the United States was founded upon the principle that all people are created with the unalienable right to freedom and added the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, making slavery illegal, and whereas human trafficking and slavery in the United States is most often found in the form of forced labor and sex trafficking, which weakens our social fabric, increases violence and organized crime, and debases our humanity of those within our community. And whereas every business community, organization, faith community, family, and individual can make a difference by choosing products that are not made by forced labor. Also by working to protect people from sexual exploitation and by becoming more aware of the problem and the possible solutions. And whereas the Iowa Network Against Human Trafficking and Slavery, as well as the Rotary Club of Des Moines, has been working since 2005 to abolish all forms of human trafficking through education, volunteerism, advocacy, and collaboration. Now, therefore, I, Connie Bozen, on behalf of the City Council and the citizens of Des Moines, do hereby proclaim the month of January 2024 as Human Trafficking Prevention and Awareness Month. I encourage everyone to become more informed on this growing problem, to be vigilant and report suspicious activity and to work toward solutions to end human trafficking in all of its forms. If you see something that does not look right, take action and call local law enforcement or the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373-7888. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Des Moines, Iowa, to be affixed this 22nd day of January, 2024. So thank you. Would anyone like? Thank you. Yeah. Here you go. Would anyone like to speak on it? Or thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything more? Okay. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Des Moines and Rotarians everywhere and the community we live in, we appreciate your attention to this very serious issue. Thank you so much for the uh -huh. proclamation. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, with that, we'll have a few minutes before we'll start the regular meeting at 5 o'clock. You got it? Okay.
formal meeting. I'd like to do a uh, statement on the uh, former mayor, uh, John Pat Dorian. And so before we have the meeting, I want to say a few words honoring and remembering former mayor John Pat Dorian. John was a visionary and a compassionate leader, served as the mayor of Des Moines from 1998 to 2004. Under his leadership, Des Moines witnessed significant development and infrastructure advancements. His commitment to revitalizing our downtown area transformed it into a vibrant place for business and community life, laying the foundation we continue to build on today. John's leadership was not just about physical development, but about community building. He believed in the power of collaboration, working closely with city officials, businesses, and residents to foster a spirit of unity and progress. John Pat Dorian reminds us of one individual's impact in shaping a community's future. His legacy inspires us as we work towards a brighter, more inclusive Des Moines. If you'd please join me in a moment of silence to honor John Pat Dorian's memory and contributions to our city. Thank you. So we will start our uh, July 22nd, 2024 meeting. And if we'd please take the roll. Bozen. Here. Voss. Here. Coleman. Here. Westergaard. Here. Mandelbaum. Here. Gatto. Here. We have a quorum. Item number two is approving the agenda as presented and or as amended. And tonight we have some items. Uh, 4X has been withdrawn. Inspections are incomplete. 4CC withdrawn. Inspections are incomplete. Item 34 is withdrawn by the engineering department. And on the regular agenda items, item 48 has been updated. And item 43 has been updated with the speaker's list. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and approved. Please vote. Six yes. Next item is approving the consent agenda. And on that one, uh, we have item 4L, 4M, 4N, Coleman's voting no. Item 5, Voss is voting no. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Please, please vote. Six yes. So that takes us to our. Our hearings. Item 44, on vacation of air and surface rights in a portion of 6th Avenue right of way adjoining 3614 6th Avenue and conveyance of a permanent easement for airspace above city owned property and a permanent easement for building encroachment to 36 on 6th LLC for $1,120. Uh, A is first consideration of the ordinance above. Germane comments from the general public, two minutes per person to speak, and 10 minutes is maximum on this item. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll open up to the council. There's been a motion to move and seconded. Please vote. Let me reset it. He's not, okay. used, he's not used to going to his right. <laughs> Six yes. Yeah. Okay, the motion carries. Item 45, on vacation of subsurface rights in a portion of 6th Avenue right-of-way in the vicinity of 1716 6th Avenue and conveyance of a permanent easement for subsurface building encroachment on city-owned property to center at 6th for $450. A, first consideration of ordinance above. Again, germane comments from the general public, two minutes per person. Would anyone like to speak to this? If not, I'll turn it over to the council. I'll move item 45 and 45A. There's no speakers or nobody here pursuant to rule 42, I, 42A. 
I, I would move 45, 45A and take final action on it tonight. Second. Please vote. Six, yes. Motion carries. Item 46 on a request from Mid American Company, Terry L. Smith Officer, and the District Developer LLC, Tim Ripma Officer, to amend the plan DSM, creating our tomorrow comprehensive plan to, revi to revise the future land use classification from downtown mixed use to public, semi public, and to rezone multiple parcels located in the vicinity of 200 Southeast 2nd Street from limited DXR and limited DX1 downtown districts to limited P2 public, civic, and institutional district to allow the development of the space for a park and an accessory surface parking area. A, first consideration of ordinance above. B, final consideration of ordinance above. A waiver was requested by the applicant and requires six votes. And so the first will be the parties of interest. Is there one, anyone here to talk on that matter, this matter? And second will be a germane comments from the public. Seeing no one, I'll turn it over to. Seeing no, I'll, I'll move item 46, 46A and 46B. Second. Please vote. Six, yes. Motion carries. Item 47, on a request from Sundry Church, Anthony J. Hodges, Officer to rezone 4112 6th Avenue from limited N3B neighborhood district to N3B neighborhood district to remove their zoning condition that requires at least one off street motor vehicle parking space located outside of the front yard area on any parcel that contains a one household residential use. A is first consideration of ordinance above. B is a final consideration of ordinance above. Waiver requested by the applicant requires six votes. First, we'll hear from the parties of interest that live within 250 feet of the property. So is there anyone wishing to speak? If not, we'll open it up for germane comments from the public. Seeing no one, I'll turn it over to the council. Item 47, 47A and B. Second. Okay, please vote. Six, yes. Motion carries. Did we? He's pushing. The vote. He's pushing. I'm going to vote twice. <laughs> Did your vote get registered fairly? Yours was colored. What do you guys have down? Well. Yeah, you take care of it. Okay. What you guys got going on? <laughs> Item 48. <laughs> on a request from WCMRP, Des Moines Center, LLC, Michaela Scott, officer, for review and approval of a second amendment to the Southdale, P Southdale PUD conceptual plan located at 4900 Southeast 14th Street to allow the expansion of a retail use to include multiple outdoor storage and display areas. This will continue from January 8th, 2024 meeting. First, we'll ask for the parties of interest and the applicant for rezoning and those within 250 feet of the property to be rezoned. Seeing no one, uh, we'll open it up to the general public. If not, I'll turn it over to the council. Yep, I see none, Madam Mayor. I'll move uh, item 48. Okay, please vote. Six, yes. Motion carries. Item 49, on Stone Park improvements, a resolution approving plans, specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file bids, and designating the lowest responsible, responsible bidder as Caliber Concrete, LLC, Jason Martin, owner, for two million one hundred thirty-two thousand four hundred fourteen dollars and sixty-six cents, it's the council communication number twenty-four zero thirty-three. A is approval of the contract and the bond. General public may comment on the plans, specifications, form of documents, engineer's estimate, or low bidder designation, and those will be the only comments to be considered germane. 
Is there anyone wishes to speak to this item? Seeing no one, I will turn over to the council. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I, I appreciate this. A lot of thank yous to a lot of different departments. Um, Parks Department, number one, would be uh, a big thank you to them, to the engineering, to your office, Scott, of getting this all grouped together along with financing, and then to the Kelly family uh, for the $500,000 donation. This is an amazing project for that area. Um, I spent a lot of time playing baseball on this field, and it's no longer a senior league field. Now it's going to be a great park, so I'm really happy to move uh, 49 and 49A. Okay. Please vote. Again, a uh, graded opportunity for the kids in that area. It is. It's awesome. Six, yes. Motion carries. And that's the end of our hearings. It is five, well, five ten. Okay, the next item is item 50. Uh, that is consideration of a request from MT Home Services LLC represented by Ashley Martinez to demolish the structure at 1410 19th Street pursuant to section 58-70 of the Historic Preservation Ordinance. Choose one alternative below. Council communication number 24-022. A, deny the request to demolish the building at 1410 19th Street or B, approve the request to demolish the building at 1410 19th Street. Seeing no one, uh, I'll turn this over to the council. A quick comment. I probably assumed I would be against the demolition of this project because I love these old historical houses, um, but I very much appreciate the thorough report I think we all got from staff. Um, it, it, it laid out the uh, complications and the difficulty of, of investing in this property and thinking it could have a new life. I, I, I have driven by it a couple of times to check it out personally, and I think, um, unfortunately, um, it's probably time for the house to, to be removed. So I'm going to move 50B. Second. Okay, please vote. Six, yes. The motion carries. 50I, receive and file council discussion and public discussion regarding a vacancy in the office of the at-large council member and directing staff to draft a resolution reflecting council's intent on filling the vacancy at its February 5th, 2024 council meeting as follows. So you can choose one alternate below, hold a special election, or B, have a different council action. So with that, um, I'll open it up if anyone is here to speak to that item. You'll get the standard uh, two minutes on an item. <laughs> and state your name and address or ward. Good evening, Peggy Fitch, Ward 3, zip code 50311. Uh, appreciate your attention tonight on this very important matter. I'm speaking in support of a special election to fill the vacant at-large city council seat. So at-large city council member represents all residents in the city. Uh, and so all who are eligible to vote should have a voice in choosing who will represent them. A special election would allow for inclusion of all of the diverse perspectives and needs of those who live within the city of Des Moines. A special election would also demonstrate respect for democracy and greater transparency on the part of the council, which would contribute to Des Moines residents greater trust in city government. And a council member who is elected would know they were chosen by the people they represent. Uh, and as such, they're likely to be more engaged in the process of city government and committed to serve than someone who is merely appointed to fill the seat. Uh, also, two years is just too long for uh, an uh, interim appointment to any city council seat, in my opinion. So uh, here's my request tonight. Please. Let voters decide um, and cast your vote in favor of holding a special election to fill the at-large uh, city council seat that's vacant. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, John Noble, uh, Ward 1, 50310. Um, I just want to say it is 
uh, devastating that we have to come here and ask the council to elect our own representatives. Um, obviously, I'm in favor of calling a special election. We should be able to elect someone who represents the entire city for two years. Um, it is a shame that that's even that alternatives are even being considered when there are much bigger issues in this city right now. There are people who are literally dying on the streets because of cold exposure, and we're debating if we can elect our own representatives. Uh, there are people who cannot pay their bills in this city right now, and we are, uh, we are debating if the citizens of Des Moines, if the people of Des Moines should be allowed to elect our own representatives. There are major, major issues in this city that this council has chosen not to address time and time again. The, uh, many members of this council um, couldn't even admit that Des Moines PD had an issue with racial profiling so we can't tackle that issue, but again, we're debating if we should be able to elect our own representatives. Um, it should go without saying that we should call a special election on this issue so that we can get back to the work of actually helping the people who are suffering in this city because of cold and because of this council's inaction. Thank you very much. My name is Tom Rendon. I I'm a resident of Ward 1 and also a member of the Iowa CCI's racial justice team. And I think my sweatshirt speaks louder than my words. Uh, I am here to speak in support of having us holding a special election. Um, I think that to support a special election um, it means that you support democracy. And um, that, should, that says to me that this would be a central value of yours as people who are going to be making this uh, uh, decision. The problem is, is that democracy is messy, and it is difficult, and it is expensive. So there may be many reasons not to hold it, to have a different council action, whatever that might be. But if you do so, you need to justify why your values to do so would be more important than the value of democracy, which I think we all hold as sacred. At least I would hope so as both residents of Des Moines as well as citizens of this country. So when the city council election was held in November, there were a number of you who won. Congratulations. You won by fairly slim majorities. And so we have a divided council here. And so if you don't go back into the community and ask them who they should have as yet another representative on this committee, that seems to me an abrogation of your responsibilities. So I am urging you to hold the special election. Thank you. Uh, good evening, City of Des Moines. My name is Pudisak El Basud. I'm a resident of Ward 2, zip code 50317. Um, I'm just here because I care about the City of Des Moines. I'm a lifelong resident, um, also an Iowa CCI member, and I just want to make sure that the City of Des Moines has an opportunity to elect the next leader that will represent the at-large seat. I just want to make sure that the City of Des Moines has um, the opportunity to know who is running and make sure that, um, that the voters of Des Moines uh, can best choose the best person to represent their interests, um, the things they need taken care of, and to make sure that we have a bright future for years to come. Thank you. Hello, my name is Taylor. I am a resident of Ward 3, zip code 50309, and I am here <coughs> in support of a special election. I'm also a member of Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement, who has a thousand nearly 1,000 members in Des Moines, and I've been calling for a special election since late November. You've heard from us on, on the phone, email, social media. You've probably heard of the petition we've been circulating, and we're, we were glad to hear from council members Bozen and Mandelbaum of their support. Um, we did not hear from the rest, uh, so I'm excited to, um, see, you, to see your choice. Um, and so please let me be clear in saying vote for option A to have a special election for the at-large seat. Let voters decide who will represent them. And Mr. Coleman, as you are here as a result of a special election yourself, it would not make sense um, for you to vote 
uh, against the at-large seat. Um, so I'm asking all of you to do the right thing, let voters decide, and hold a special election. Thanks. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, I'll turn it over to Council. Yeah, sure. Madam Mayor, I, I'd <laughs> like to, uh, first of all, thank all the folks for coming to speak. Um, I know we've got multiple emails and things. Um, I, I'm happy to uh, call for a special election and support a special election. I'd actually do it before the next Council meeting, so I'm going to make a motion for B and direct the City Clerk to contact the County Auditors, and we'll call for a special election tonight and they can decide what date it's going to be. So I will move 50 I B um, as it is right now. I don't know if anyone else wants to speak, but that would be my motion and I would, I would do that sooner than later. I don't think we need to have any other discussions about it. Well, I guess I, I have a question in terms of just understanding the potential timing. Uh, what, what are the options from a timing perspective? I know there's things that are triggered, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I, I guess, first question, and I might have comments, what, what, is, what is the range of time that this could be held uh, as we direct action? So the, the uh, county auditor, uh, by statute, is to uh, call for an election at the earliest practicable date, um, uh, and that not less than 32 days after being notified by the council that they're calling the special election um, and what that date might be, that, that's not specific, so that would be up to the auditor. My guess is it would be uh, the, the first Tuesday that's uh, where it's uh, practicable after 32 days, so it would either be March 5th or March 19th. Or March 12th? Could be March 12th. Yes, sir. Uh, Quick question, could we approve this final tonight rather than at our February, February 5th meeting? I believe that was Council Member Gatto's. Yeah, but why not just change, why not instead of choosing B, just um, because you have to change. revise the. Because the February process. 5th says hold it, to talk about it. B would be uh, the different council action, which would be directing her tonight to call for the special election, what these folks are here to ask for. Oh, okay. Rather so we're, than we're going to call for it immediately. Instead of waiting to another, until, another until February weeks. 5th, we would go ahead and tell the county auditor that we, the date. we would have the clerk let the county auditor know that we want an election. And yep. it's up to them to determine when they would have it. We don't have a choice. Oh, okay. I, I would we just should have did it the last meeting when she vacated the seat, is what we should have done. But we there's no reason to drag this thing on another two more weeks we if, need to call for the if election we have now. an overwhelming support i i'm overwhelmingly supportive of it so. are you yeah. seconding the motion i second it but i just would like to make sure that the language can, can meets I, your this yeah right can i can i read a uh, uh the motion would be calling for the council calling for a special election at the earliest practicable date and directing the city clerk to notify the county auditor of council's direction that is my motion sir second I guess I, the question that I have, uh, so if we do this tonight, it's possible that the special election could be as early as March 5th. That's correct. But if we did this on February 5th, the earliest it could be would be March 12th or March 19th. So we're talking a week mm -hmm. or two. So right. We, we, they, anyone that wants to run has known that this seat is going to be vacant on November 7th. So I would think that anyone that wanted to run or wanted had interest in it is ready to go as we call for a special election. These folks are kind enough to take their time to come down and ask for a special election, and I think that we should grant that request at the soonest available time. And it somewhat depends on what the county uh, auditors have. If they have another election, yeah. then it c cuts us quite honestly down because they're already going to have their people there. Is there another election? I don't, I don't know, but okay. there might be there, you know, when you can do, there might be another one. It's up to them to decide anyway. I, yeah. I, I think I mean, so. My, my take is that I, I would prefer, I'm very much supportive of a special election. I want to make sure, and I mean, quite honestly, like this process has not been 
as transparent as it could be. I want to make sure the public has an opportunity to know and as much notice uh, as possible. I mean, I, I think. So I, if the outcome is going to be the same, well, we're all in support. I, I, I mean, the outcome is that we're going to have an election, right? Uh, the outcome is that we're going to have an election. I think minimally we buy the public a week or two by coming back and doing it. Well, that's not I, part of my motion. You can I, vote no if you'd I, like. I, I understand. I'm just being transparent about my concerns and hoping to have some discussion about it. Now, maybe this was all discussed No, There's nothing elsewhere. to discuss. We've, we've been, this seat has been vacant since January 1. We've known that Mayor Mosen won November 7th. So anyone with any interest of running for this seat, I'm sure they were thinking about it whether you would have won or whether she would have won. So I would have think that somebody would have been ready to go by now. So, but then wait until February 5th? I don't understand why we would do that. I think this council need a seventh person sitting there. So when we have things that we need six votes, that we have that option. And the sooner, the better. And that includes through the budget. I think the one thing is that we we are not going to be setting the date. It could still no. be March 19th, even if we vote on It could on be later today. than March 19th. It it's up be. to so them. So it's up to them to determine, and that can be a discussion with them based on what they have going. So I don't think it's a, I think we hear very clearly, and I've heard emails. I've, I've answered that I've been supportive of this from the get-go. So, and it sounds like the other council members are, so I think it's, Really, it would be up to the auditor or probably getting to them to say what would be the best date for them, too. So, and it, like I said, it could be March 19th. It could be the March 12th. I doubt if spring break would not be the best time. But um, I, so I think. I, we're just asking for the election. I would just. The earliest would, it could be is March 5th. That's I would it. add one thing. The reason I think it's wise to do it tonight is I, I just think we don't want to be accused of gamesmanship right. over. <laughs> over candidate selection and that kind of stuff and we've made we know what we're going to do we can announce it tonight and move forward You're what, doing games well i think quite honestly people came down and to have them come back down again to speak to see what we're going to do so to the point of having come, come well, down and again it's up to the county auditor well i, so. I mean i i think it's clear there's a consensus for a special election and i, I mean i have a very strong preference for a special election i guess the one concern that I have is that, I, and, and I know folks have been thinking about it, I, I mean, there have been a lot of rumors about what's going on. I, I just heard some things today about changes that, that might change the way some people think about it. I mean, there was someone who was out in the field with a poll who's not apparently running, and none of this has been particularly transparent to the public. So I, I I think a special election is important, and I think it's important to give the public time to organize and to, to feel that the process is transparent. Uh, I get that what, what this council is saying is that, you know, ask the, ask the county if you want more time. It's clear, I mean, I don't want to vote against a special election, so I'm happy to vote for a special election, but I want to share the concerns that I have about, uh, about, about this discussion and I, I've done that I've spoke I appreciate piece. that because I think everybody you know I think everybody's been concerned number one thing is they want an election the timing is really up to the county auditor no matter whether it's today or whether it's two weeks from today they can determine that uh, and it would be a matter of you know what is the what they feel is the best or what they have going so uh, but instead of having people have to come back down I think we know where we're at I think it's prudent to just maybe move forward so people can make that determination. There's a motion. So with that, uh, there's been a motion and a second, and I'll ask for a vote. Six, yes. Motion carries. The next item is 51, amending chapter 114 of the municipal code regarding traffic regulation changes to approve rates for the surface parking lots of 
1300 Locust Street and 1290 Walnut Street. Council communication number 24-028. Is there see no one that would like to speak on this? If you there's a one wave the second and third. Yes, yes, please. Pursuant to Rule 42A. Please vote. Six yes. Item number 52, amending Chapter 114 of the Municipal Code regarding the traffic regulation changes as follows. Council communication number 24-029, a code correction Grand Avenue from 7th Street to 8th Street. Open this up if no one wishes to speak. Council? I'll move item 52, uh, 52A and pursuant to Rule 42A, waive the second and third reading. Second. Please vote. Six yes. Okay, that takes us to our uh, communications reports and the request to speak. Uh, each speaker will receive three minutes to speak and will be uh, silenced at the end of the three minutes. Uh, the first person was Jolene Prescott. I believe she is not going to be here. Okay, uh, Cody Dolensek. I said. I don't think Cody's going to be here okay. either. Okay. But Adam Callanan. Hello, my name is Adam Callanan. I live in Ward 3. Um, I'm going to talk about something different than I'd planned on at first, just to get some things on the record about what just happened with the special election motion. Um, what was on the agenda was to have it in a way that would give public notice before the election was declared. Uh, what happened instead, which was not on the agenda, which I understand is legal to do things that aren't Limitly on the agenda, but it seems conspicuous that council seemed to come prepared with a different motion for B, which says different council action. Um, thank you for groaning while I talk. That's very rude, but okay. And now coughing while I talk. Thank you. The point is, um, what it feels like to the public may or may not be true, but the appearance to the public on issues that seem not transparent are an issue for city trust. Is it seems like the city and people like Goddard who say um, candidates you already know, it seems like some people have been in contact with the city about running. Um, and those people have been prepared before tonight, and now people who don't have connections to the city government are just finding out tonight and won't be prepared for the election, as well as the preferred council candidates. Um, I just wanted to say that on the record because it seems like that was being kind of jumped around, and that's what the appearance is um, to a lot of the public. Anyway, my planned remarks, might get through some of these now, um, is what I always come here to say, um, which is we need to have virtual meetings. Um, we need more access. The reason why I talk at these meetings is because I'm always here just to take notes, um, but I know a lot of people in my community that can't come to these meetings in person for various reasons, but could have virtual meetings, uh, could participate virtually. Um, so I'm speaking as much as I can on their behalf um, because we need that level of access. We're a big enough city that should have that. Other cities and I would have that. Um, also, just for a basic remote call-in, we had presenters for 21st century policing um, that were calling. They were on the phone, they didn't have a video feed. They had to tune into the YouTube video for the meeting that was a few seconds behind, and they were the ones giving the presentation um, of a slideshow. It was just very awkward, and again, we spend millions of dollars at these meetings, but we don't seem to have remote capabilities, even for the people that um, aren't just the public, for the presenters that the city pays aren't getting good access to these meetings virtually. And that's an accessibility issue as well as just being, I think, embarrassing for the city. Um, when people come on to watch these meetings and somebody's talking, over a phone line that's not very clear, that's a problem for accessibility. Anyway, thank you. Have a nice day. Lou R. Hellmeyer. Hello, Council. My name is Lou, and I live in Ward 1. I'm a member for the Party of Socialism and Liberation. Last week, Thursday, the Iowa House passed a House resolu resolution to give support and unwavering commitment to the State of Israel. Unwavering commitment and support. Unwavering. On October 7th, according to Israeli Social Security data, 695 Israeli civilians died, 36 of who were children, as well as 373 security forces and 71 foreigners, bringing the total to 1,139. On October 7th, according to Reuters, at least 1,000 freedom fighters from Gaza were killed. Since then, Israel has killed 25,105 Palestinians, and Gazan fighters killed 1,410 Israelis. 
Israel has also killed 76 Palestinian journalists, four Israeli journalists, three Lebanese journalists, and 136 UN relief workers were killed by Israel. Unwavering, really? 85% of Gazans are displaced. One in 100 Gazans are dead. 33% of all buildings destroyed in, are destroyed in Gaza. Roughly 62,681 Palestinians have been seriously injured. Only 16 of 36 hospitals are operational, albeit minimally. Unwavering, really. Imagining this in Des Moines, one-eighth of Des Moines is dead. One-third of Des Moines is severely injured. 44% of our hospitals no longer exist, with them only being capable of basic surgery with nearly no light, running water, and at times out of power. 25,888 residents of Des Moines were killed in this instance. Unwavering, really? According to Netanyahu, Palestinians are the people of darkness, while Israelis are the people of the light. According to Yoav Gallant, the Minister of Defense, they are allowed no restraint, can attack any, everything, by all means allowed with no compromise. Yoav Gallant also says they are fighting human animals and defends all actions by saying they are acting in accordance with Palestinians being human animals. Unwavering, really? Join Coralville, Iowa in reaching out to the Palestinian community to draft a ceasefire resolution. Respond to the state of Iowa and defy them. Join the municipalities calling for a ceasefire. Join San Francisco, Detroit, Atlanta, and Richmond, California, as well as many more. Don't let your friendship with Iowa Republicans get in the way of your humanity. Don't let your friendship with Zionists who have volunteered with the IDF and assisted with HR 101 being passed get in the way of your humanity. Thank you. Ben Zakrich. Is Ben Zakrich here? No, he couldn't make it today. Okay. Taylor Nelson? I'm, I'm good. Okay, you're good. Carol Maher? Let's see her. Peggy Fitch? I spoke. You spoke? Okay, you were on the other item. Carolyn Newland Hockey Walker, I see her. I think we're having a little technical difficulty. Uh, <laughs> do you have something to pass out, Carolyn? I do have this to pass out at the end, but uh, if you want to just pass, if you want to pass it around, because it looks like um, they're having a bit of. As a teacher, though, I say please don't read it while I'm talking. We will not read it. We will follow your instructions. I, I mean, I've been a teacher. Uh, <laughs> yes. Receive file and read later. And second, is there a second? Uh, All in favor. Okay, um, and we will not read it okay. while you're talking. Well, that my teacher stuff is inbred in me. I understand. <laughs> Never lose it. Um, well, uh, just a minute. I uh, got to find the beginning of my talk here. Uh, Carolyn Eulen Hake Walker. Uh, I live in Ward Three. Uh, as a member of the Des Moines City Task Force on Sustainability, I've been coming to City Council regularly since the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015, so it's about nine years. Uh, during public comment time, I've been speaking about things like climate change at the local level, hiring a sustainability manager, and also creating a climate action plan. Tonight, I am here because of two things, a climate crisis and a nature crisis. The nature crisis is uh, in here that I'm talking about is the pollinator crisis. Last year I was part of, uh, and that's what this brochure is, No Mo May, and um, <clears throat> you can look at the front just for a little bit. It says, uh, why no mo, mo less may. So we, at the very beginning of our promotion as a team, when we passed out our signs, giving this brochure said we were not only no mo may, but mo less may, and think about putting native plants in your, uh, in your yard. So, <clears throat> um, yes, uh, I watched the workshop um, having to do with reports of complaints about no mo may. 
uh, last Monday, and I saw yesterday an article in the Des Moines Register called Yard Wars. And I was like, Yard Wars? We're just trying to get people to save the little bees and hummingbirds. So I, I came back here uh, to say that uh, we do have alternatives. I'm also a member of the Stormwater Advisory Committee, and one of the big things we're doing, uh, I should say, actually Public Works is doing, is um, giving subsidies for putting in rain gardens, for putting in soil restoration, for putting in uh, all the best management practices, including native plants. So that is going on. So we just kind of want to complement that because um, I was going to put on the screen. Does the screen work now? I'm sorry, the camera is not coming up. No, OK. I'm sorry. Um, OK. Uh, anyway, um, uh, at my last meeting, I got a, a summary of how many subsidies we have granted since 2017 till now. And the total is 356 subsidies have been given mostly, 50% of them, to rain barrels. So um, our No Mow May campaign got, does that mean I stop? That noise? Oh. No, it's just you're close. Oh. Um, that we got 300 people to participate in No Mow May um, with 300, well, a little over 300 signs. So what we're saying is, let's do this together. It costs no money. It costs no time because you don't have to put fertilizers and pesticides and water. By the way, our 40 million acres of yards take up 9 billion gallons of water every day. So, so it's a really good thing. And we're going to continue it because we have a whole bunch of signs left. And we bought a bunch of, uh, of stickers called Less, so we're going to also put on our sign not only no Mo May, but Mo Less May, so that people won't get confused and say, hey, let's support these pollinators. Thank you. Denver Foot. I don't see Denver. Joanne Muldoon. Joanne. Uh, I'm Joanne Muldoon from Ward 1. I'm also here to talk about Let's Know No More May. Uh, Let's Know No More May is a community citizen science initiative to limit mowing, mowing before June 1st in order to provide early season uh, po pollinators foraging and nesting sites in urban settings. So we've all heard the statistics that the pollinator count has dropped 50% in the last 50 years and that 75% of the human food supply relies directly on or indirectly on pollinators. So without pollinators, we're kind of done for. Um, and while let's know no mo may is not the complete answer to bringing back pollinators, it has been evaluated in peer-reviewed literature and found to be effective in increasing both the numbers and types of plants the pollinators rely on and the number of, and types of pollinators themselves. Our ultimate goal is to increase native plantings and pollinators and nesting sites in our Des Moines urban landscape of which no mo, less mo may is a component. And as Carolyn just said, um, less mo, no mo may is free. It's free to the residents who participate. It's free to the city. There aren't any grants involved. Um, people just participate. And it's gotten to the tune of almost the same number of people that participated in the stormwater uh, uh, grant uh, program over the last seven years, almost the same number of people in one year to participate. So people who hadn't thought about sustainability, hadn't thought about beginning to make their landscape more sustainable, went for it for the first time last year. And that's why we're going to keep, we're going to keep doing Les Monomo May. Um, this year, we plan to provide native seeds and plants to uh, participants. We also plan to uh, uh, work more directly with city programs like the Tiny Tree Program, the Stormwater Grant Program, and the City's Block Grant Challenge Program, all of which could en encourage native plantings. We would also like to work with the newly hired 
uh, weed control staff to make sure that we're not enrolling people who are habitual offenders with regard to weeds. So in the, in the, you know, in the final analysis, what we're about is helping Des Moines implement its adaptability plan and to make our, our city a, uh, a more sustainable place to live. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just comment on this issue, I have actually directed staff to try to coordinate all the things that we have through the stormwater and the, through part of our plants and try to get people to encourage them to transform their yards into more rain guards and things like that. So we're gonna try to come up with some things to enhance so that people don't get confused with what was going on and uh, to full further what uh, was started. So we'll have more information on that. But with that, I'll move I to think. receive and file 53A through K. Okay, please vote. Six yes. Motion carries. I want to thank everyone for coming this evening and giving us your group points. And at this point, the meeting is adjourned. Good job.